I have a word to deliver for someone. It may or may not be for you. It may not be for everyone. But I have to put it out there. So, we're coming out of Isaiah 28. That is the basis for the message, Isaiah 28. What sorrow awaits the proud city of Samaria, the glorious crown of the drunks of Israel. It sits at the head of a fertile valley, but its glorious beauty will, will, will fade like a flower. It is the pride of a people brought down by wine. I'm going to just stop this right here real quick. Remember I told y'all a couple videos back that some people beauty finna be stripped from them. Like everything that look good is not good. Um, but uh, you could check that video out. It's it's a couple of videos back, but I did tell y'all in advance that some people do what, what once looked good. It's not gonna look good no more. What once was good, it's not gonna be good no more. What once was favorable, and um, I'm gonna give you this one. Basically, the first will be last, and the last will be first. What was um, looking good to the eye, people are going to be able to see beneath the surface now. Exposure is coming. So, whereas everything looked like a 10, it's going to be brought down to a zero now. So, um, anyway, pay attention. Like, pay attention. And if, if the word is too long for you, speed it up. But pay attention. What sorrow awaits the proud city of Samaria, the glorious crown of the drunks of Israel. It sits at the head of a fertile valley, but its glorious beauty will fade like a flower. It is the pride of a people brought down by wine. Okay, some of these people be arrogant and prideful. Okay. All right. It will be very bad for Ephraim's beautiful city, Samaria. The people who live there drink too much wine and they become drunk. They are proud of their great city. It is on a hill above a valley where many good things grow. It is like a flower. It is like a beautiful flower, but it will be beautiful no more and it will die. So it will be beautiful no more. Remember I told y'all a few videos back that some people beauty is about to be stripped. Okay, this is your confirmation again. Some things that was once looking good, some things that were once flourishing, some things that were once hidden and concealed where you thought it was one thing, but it's really another. It is about to be exposed. And what once looked good is not going to look good no more. What, what once was popping is not popping no more. What once seemed invincible is no longer invincible. It was an illusion. Okay. So how terrible it will be for Samaria, the pride of Israel's drunken people. That beautiful crown, which is a wreath, you know, like garland of flowers is just a dying plant fading. So, you know how a couple of videos back, I told y'all about how um, crowns signify victory. And obviously right here, what once looked like it had the victory, what once looked good, um, it's, uh, it says that beautiful crown of flowers is just a dying plant. It's fading. So what once had the victory, it, it really don't have the victory. What once looked good is, is no, is, is no more. Um, it states that beautiful crown of flowers is just a dying plant, which is fading set on a hill above a rich valley where drunkards live where those who are overcome with wine live mm -hmm. yes i got to i got hey, to get up. off of there i got to up you got to get off of there get off of there stand up straight and move your hand i got i pulled you up you finna throw up mm -hmm. okay so you you holding yourself like you got to pee. Yes. And you're about to throw up. Yes. But you're talking to me. Mm -hmm. And you're about to throw up. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. So, which one is it? Um, a boo boo. You got a boo boo now. No, a pee pee. You got a pee pee. And I drop up. And you throw it up. Okay, I feel like you're playing with me right now, so I'm gonna need you to exit and find something else to do. Okay. Go ahead, use the hall bathroom and close the door. The hall? Yes, close the door. We're joined at the hill. And like, he's gonna come see what I'm doing. He's gonna bust in, he's gonna come talk to me. It's just Grayson. He is going to come see what I'm doing and make up any excuse to see what I'm doing. <laughs> However, sometimes I don't play that. <laughs> sometimes. Okay, back to the word. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, right, okay. So next. Um the Lord is about to send a mighty army. It could be a person, a group. It could be anything. But what I'm gathering is that it's a person that's coming to knock these folks flat on their back. See, you know how we hear about um, everybody think they bad to the baddest show up to the next. It's always somebody better than you out there. Or they, you know how we hear people say, I can't wait for somebody to get hope to that person. Or I can't, I can't wait for them to, um, they might have did you wrong, like did something terrible to you. Or they might have just did something they had no business doing to you. And you probably sitting there like, I can't wait for them to get what's coming to them. And they're about to get what's coming to them. If they have not already met the person that is about to give them what is coming to them if the person who is about to give them what is coming to them if it's not you it could be you and you don't even know it see god has a mysterious way of doing things he has a a crazy way of 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 doing things because see whatever they did to you you're not the first person they tried you're not the first person they played with. You're not the first person they hurt. You're not the first person they used. You're not the first person they set up. You're not the first person they, they disrespected. You're not the first person they abused. You're not the first. You're not the first. You're not the first. But how it's going to go down, they didn't make their match. Anyway, um, it states, for the Lord will send a mighty army against it, like a mighty hailstorm and a torrential torrential rain they will burst upon it like a surging flood and smash it to the ground so pay attention i'm sorry see the lord has one who is powerful and strong like a hailstorm and a destructive wind like a driving rain and a flooding downpour he will throw it forcefully to the ground keyword see the lord has one who is powerful and strong. So I don't know who coming, what's coming, or if whatever is coming is you. I have no clue. Take it to God and, and he'll let you know. Look, the Lord is sending a strong and powerful army to attack it. It will come like a strong storm of ice. Its winds destroy everything. It is like rain that pours down and causes a flood. He will knock down Ephraim's great city to the ground with his great power. It says he, 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 not they, it says he. So the army could be a one man army. And we all know that one thing about God. He don't got to show up with no click. All he need is him. And we know that greater is he that is in me. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You dig what I'm saying? See, he will knock down the great city. Do you get what I'm saying? So God only, I want to remind you of a time where God used one person. And his name was David. Okay. And see some of these people, some of these things, some of these situations seem bigger than you. It seemed like you're dealing with a Goliath. And it only took that one person. It only took that one person. And it was over with. All right. 
So remember that. Okay. It says. The Lord has someone strong and powerful. Ready to attack them. Someone. It says has someone. It don't say some people. It doesn't say a group. The Lord has someone strong and powerful ready to attack them. Someone who will come like a hailstorm, like a torrent of rain, like a rushing, overpowering flood and will overwhelm the land. OK, so someone who is strong and powerful and ready to attack. OK. New King James Version. States, behold, the Lord has a mighty and strong one, like a tempest of hell and a destroying storm, like a flood of mighty waters overflowing, who will bring them down to earth, to the earth with his hand. This one person, it says, behold, the Lord has a mighty and strong one. Whoever this person is, they could probably take down a city by themselves. God handpicked them. Whoever this one person is, they could probably take down a group by themselves. They might be struggling. They might be suffering. But in the end, you playing with that one person. They playing with you. They playing with you and they don't know. They don't know how you get down for real until the Lord showed them how you get down. They don't know who they playing with. It ain't even about how you get down. It's about how he get down. They they playing with the wrong one. What we know, what we definitely know, we know, we know this person is coming. Um, we know this person is operating as an army. This is definitely from the Lord, from God. They will win. Defeat is sure. That's what we know. That's for show show. Like there is no if and buts about this portion. That's what we know. Okay, their enemies will trample beneath their feet. Okay, so their enemies will be trampled beneath their feet. So, the proud city of Samaria, the glorious crown of the drunks of Israel, will be trampled beneath its, its enemies' feet. I want to make reference to um, something we know in um, the Bible is stated about... Um, let me look it up real quick. We remember it spoke on. Um, how the serpent will strike the hill, but we will bruise his head. So that's Genesis 315. Um. It says, he shall bruise your head and you will strike his heel, basically. So we know whatever going on, the fact that um, these enemies will be trampled beneath their feet or beneath your feet. We know that they've been doing the devil's work. We know that they're not right. We know, ain't no if and buts about it. There is no, but uh, uh, no, no, whatever went down, is not right. God is acknowledging and letting you know he saw it. He see it. It's not right. And you will bruise their head while they strike your heel, just as the, you know the serpent in the, in the in the Bible. So that was a snake. We are acknowledging um, that this person, these people, are operating like a snake, pretty much. So all it takes is one blow. You get what I'm saying? So I'm gonna go here. So, the crown of pride. The drunkards of Ephraim will be trampled underfoot. That's what it states. So, yeah, that's another confirmation. Yeah. Anyway, um, it sits at the head of a fertile valley, but its glorious beauty will fade like a flower. Whoever sees it will snatch it up as, as an early fig is quickly picked and eaten. So we understand that whatever is happening is going to happen swiftly. It's going to happen quickly. Um, yeah, 
the fading glory of those proud leaders will disappear like the first figs of the season picked and eaten as soon as they are ripe. So these people could have some some sort of authority. Some they, they could be leaders in some area, whether they're over a household, over a group of friends, over family. They hold some type of position, some type of title, some type of something um, that we know of. What are you doing? Pause right there. Stop. What are you doing? You trying to get some toys? Okay. No, sir. That is not a toy. Give me that. Grayson, get what you got to get and go. And that don't work. And you know it don't work. Ain't no batteries in it. Put that remote down. Okay, we'll carry it on with you. You know, good and well, you ain't need no fingernail clipper. That one, you know that wasn't no toy. Anyway, so it states, um, Grayson, close my door, man. Okay, it says the fading glory of those proud leaders. So, yeah, highlight the fading glory. Uh, and we know it's going to happen swiftly. It's going to happen quickly. So let me give you this um, real quick because in the message version, it just chops it up brick by brick. So here it go. It says, we just read one through four um, in Isaiah 28. So message version, it has one through four. It says, doomed to the pretentious drunks of Ephraim, shabby and washed out and seedy, tipsy, sloppy fat, bare bellied parodies, a proud, I'm sorry, tipsy, sloppy fat, bare bellied parodies of a proud and handsome past. Watch closely. God has someone picked out someone tough and strong to flatten them like a hailstorm, like a hurricane, like a flash flood. One handed, he'll throw them to the ground. Samaria, the party hat on Israel's head will be knocked off with one blow. So whatever this is, one blow. All it's going to take is one hit. It, one, one call, that's all. One, that's it. It will disappear quicker than a piece of meat tossed to a dog. So whatever is going down is going to happen swiftly. Whatever they have coming for them, when the Lord sends whoever to them, is going to happen swiftly. Okay? It says it's going to disappear, disappear quicker than a piece of meat thrown to a dog. We know how dogs eat. Okay? It says... Back, back, next, next, um, we're, we're at five now. It says, Then at last, the Lord of heaven's armies will himself be Israel's glorious crown. He will be the pride and joy of the remnant of his people. So basically, victory is going to be a victory for those who are untouched by this disaster. It's going to be a victory for those who, who are, who the Lord is not coming up against. It's going to be a victory for the person who God is sending to take all this down. It's going to be a victory for you. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a victory for those who are unaffected. It's going to be a victory for God's chosen people. It's going to be a victory for the survivor. For God's children. It's going to be a victory. For God's um, leaders. It's going to be happiness and joy. To his children. Okay. At that time the Lord Almighty. Will be a great leader. Of his people. He will be like a beautiful crown for his people who still remain alive. He will help judges to decide what is right. Well, I kept going on accident. He will help judges to decide what is right. He will give strength to the people who keep the city, the city safe from those who attack it. So I want to let you know that justice is coming. 
courage for warriors are come is here it's courage for warriors is here you are the warrior whoever um god sends to on your behalf they are they they will be courageous um whatever you need justice um whatever situation you need justice to be um just whatever situation you need justice to be served in is going to happen okay um his spirit will be with you in court if you have legal matters or anything like that um if you have any type of business dealings that's coming up any type of family situations going on um any type of any type of upcoming decisions that um that is about to take place he wants to let you know he will be everywhere he will be on the bench he will be in the crowd he will be in the room he will be um he will influence on your behalf. He will help the judge or whoever is in charge of decisions, even if you are the person who is in charge of the decisions and things like that. He will help the judge to decide and he will give strength to those who keep the city or uh, strength to those who keep people safe or whether it's something that you protect or whether it's somebody um in the court of law, you know, judges, they are here to serve and protect. Police, they are here to serve and protect. He will give strength to those um, people who keep uh, cities and people safe from attacks. So any type of decision maker, any type of judge in a certain situation, it's going to go in your favor. Um, you are God's child and you have nothing to worry about. Do not be afraid. Okay. So, like I said, if you have any type of court decision or legal matters, it's going to go in favor of you who is God's child. The other person, God is sending, like I said, he said he's sending, he's sending one person to knock these people down. So, whether it be a situation to whereas you get to decide the fate of something, you get to decide how something go down, you get to decide... Um, what happens whether it be someone else over you that you have to go in front of and they're going to decide but the ruling is going to go in your favor um i don't know whether it's a family situation and put it like this god's child is going to get the victory they're going to get the victory so whatever decision is about to go down, whatever choices need to be made, whether I don't know if it's child custody, court of law, I don't know if it's home life, family life, who going to live where, who going to move where. I don't know if it's divorce. I don't know if it got something to do with children. I don't know um, custody. I don't know jobs, um, contracts. Um business partnerships just whatever i don't know it could be anything i don't know your situation only god knows and you know but you will get the victory yeah you will get the victory and so basically at that time god of the angel armies will be the beautiful crown on the head of what's left of his people energy and insights of justice to those who guide and decide strength and prowess to those who guard and protect okay got that he um is going to be a spirit of justice for those in judgment so those who are facing judgment those who um the Lord is coming up against to serve justice on your behalf. The Lord is going to be the spirit of justice himself. Okay. He going to make sure justice is served. He going to make sure things turn out the way it's supposed to. He's going to make sure that it is fair. He's going to make sure that whatever they did to you, that they're going to be paid back for everything that they did to you. So even if it's not a court of law, I want y'all to understand that. See, people be forgetting. You be scared of the court of law. You be scared of the world and the natural law and the natural police. You also better definitely be afraid of God's court. When God take you to court. Listen, when you're coming up against the Lord and, and you you going to court in his court, 
um that's serious like people be scared of the supreme court the superior court uh the state court magistrate court you need to be scared of god's court because that is a court that you cannot see and um justice will be served <laughs> there is there is your side their side and it's what god is going to do what god decides so um yeah it says he will be a spirit of justice to the one who sits in judgment a source oh yeah to the one who sits in judgment so the one who is sitting making the decision the lord is going to be a spirit of justice okay a source of strength to those who turn back at the battle gates okay um he's going to be a source of strength to someone who is defending something as well somebody who's protecting something at the city gates he's going to be a uh, strength for those people for you so if you have to say, speak on anything or say anything or He's going to be strength for you. If anybody has to speak on your behalf, he's going to be the strength for them. It says what it says. He will give a spirit of justice to those who judge. He will give strength to those who defend at the city gates in battle. Okay. Do not be nervous. Do not be afraid for he is with you. Okay. So. These people about to really go down, down. Like it's, I'm talking about when it says that in the beginning, it stated that whoever this person is, whatever this situation is, whatever this army is that that God is sending up against them, they're gonna throw them to the ground. And in one scripture, in one translation, it stated with one hand to be able to throw a person to the ground in one hand. That is some powerful stuff. That's powerful. It, okay. Continue on. It says, Now, however, Israel is led by drunks who reel with wine and stagger with alcohol. The priests and prophets stagger with alcohol and lose themselves in wine. They reel when they see visions and stagger when they render decisions. So, the definition of reel, um, first of all, it says, Now, however, Israel is led by drunks. So, these are people in, of, um, and this portion may not be for everybody, but there, there's somebody who is a leader in a sense. They have authority over something. They have a position. Um, they have weight in some type of way, but they're drunk. Um, and it says they reel with wine. So real means lose one's balance and stagger to sway to wobble to swerve to stagger um to walk in a staggering manner especially while drunk real also means to feel very giddy disoriented or bewildered typically as a result of an unexpected setback and when i read that definition i i said okay lord so that's what they're gonna be feeling too they're gonna be feeling disoriented bewildered typically as a result of the unexpected setback they're not going to be they're going to be shocked stunned shaken up um upset taken aback they're, they're not going to see this coming like they're not going to see it coming um these are leaders who can't lead properly they're not in their right mind they're can't, they can't understand the visions that they see if they're able if god has given them dreams or, or visions or anything like that they can't even understand what what they're seeing but they're getting warnings um they're getting messages but they can't even understand what they're seeing it says um they can't judge properly or make good decisions they stumble when making um when making judgment I mean when making they stumble when making judge um judgment calls. Um yeah, they stumble in judgment. They're not good leaders. Um yeah, and they can't understand the visions and, and warnings that God has been giving them. So don't think that he ain't speaking to them. He been speaking, they ain't been listening. He will help judges to decide 
what is right. He will give strength to the people who keep the city safe from those who attack it. But now wine causes the leaders in Ephraim to become drunk. They cannot walk in a straight line because they drink too much beer. Beer causes the priests and prophets to fall over. Wine confuses their minds. When they see visions, they cannot understand them. When they judge people, they cannot decide what is right. They already don't have good judgment. Um, if they had good judgment, they wouldn't have did what they did to you in the first place. Let's start there. But, um, yeah, it states, Isaiah 28, Eight, it states their tables are covered with vomit filth is everywhere so they live in a dirty everything is just unclean about them they live dirty they they they, they their actions is dirty their mind is dirty their mouth is dirty their heart is dirty everything about them is just filthy it's just nasty it's wicked it's sick it's just unclean okay um yeah it's just filth everywhere um yeah they live in vomit um and I want to remind you um, not to go back to whatever this is because the Bible states something about as a dog returns to his vomit, so a fool repeats his folly. So, yeah, mm -mm. as as when a dog goes to his own vomit and becomes abominable, so is a fool. So is fools who return in his wickedness to his own sin yeah 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 they and nine times out of ten they just not gonna stop until god do what he do so yeah anyway their tables are covered with vomit filth is everywhere um yeah they just they have unclean spirits there it is like these people or this person is filthy they're sick actually and they don't even know it Some of them do know they're sick and they don't care. They are sick all over their tables. Everywhere is covered with dirt. They're dirty. Every table is covered with vomit. They live in vomit. They live in filth. It's just, it's just everything about them is just dirty. It's filthy. They ways. The stuff that they sneaking and doing behind closed doors filthy. Their thoughts filthy. Their hearts filthy. Their minds filthy. Their actions filthy. Filthy. Which is why God is sending this strong army against them. Because they just dirty. But he's going to clean it up. <laughs> he's going to show them what's up. Anyway. Um, there is not a spot without filth. There is no place clean. Um when you're dealing with these people yeah and also these people feel like you can't tell them nothing um whoever this person is they have a, a sense of like this grand sense of self you can't tell them nothing they feel like they uncheckable they may feel as if you're talking to them like a child if you try to check them or if they confront it about their behavior um, or the things that they doing or whatever they're doing, uh, you can't tell them nothing. You can't give them no type of wisdom. You carry the spirit of the Lord. And if you say anything to them, they go up against it. They go up against the teachings, the enlightenment. They go up against whatever you try to share with them. They don't want to hear it. You can't tell them nothing. If you speak to them, they take it as you're talking down on them. These type of people, they don't got no... They low key insecure, but they don't. They everything you say is it, uh is right. You know what I'm saying? To help help steer them on the right path, even if you say it gently, they still don't accept it. Um, they take it as you talking down on them. They have these. Yeah. They have these. Who are you, spirit? Like they have this. Who you think you talking to? Who you think you? Who who is you? Like that's really how they feel. Like who are you? Excuse me. Yeah, they have these. Who are you, spirit? Like, a sense of just, they just have this grand sense of self. So, basically, Scripture states, Isaiah 28, 9. Who does the Lord think we are, they ask. Why does he speak to us like this? Are we little children just we recently weaned? Is that so? And who do you think you are to teach us? 
Who are you to lord it over us? We're not babies in diapers to be taught down to by um by such as you. Can't tell them nothing. They say, why does the Lord try to teach us like that? Who does he think that we are? He speaks to us as if we're babies. He thinks that we have just left our mother's breast. Some people really don't. They feel like <laughs> they grown. Can't tell them that. Or maybe it's just because it's, it's coming from you. When you try to correct, they don't, don't want to hear what you got to say. Not knowing that the Lord is with you. But okay. To whom will they make these mess make the message understood? To whom will they explain this message? To children, huh, to children just weaned from milk, to those just taken from their mother's breast, they speak utter nonsense. So they can't even understand what you're saying. Even if you, even if you try to talk to them, they they just can't comprehend, honey. They can't comprehend. He tells us everything over and over, one line at a time, one line at a time, a little here and a little there. They really, I really can't um, comprehend y'all. So don't feel bad, you know, don't, don't feel bad. Don't feel bad at all. He teaches us one rule at a time, one line at a time. He says it several times a little bit here a little bit there and <laughs> i'm literally taking y'all line by line so i'll be cracking up sometimes when i'm having time with god <laughs> and it just be like you want me to go deliver this oh okay okay i got you <laughs> okay but he, he he mean business he's not playing so yeah he ain't playing i ain't playing simple as that so now God will have to speak to his people through foreign oppressors who speak a strange language. So now God will speak to his people through foreign oppressors who speak a strange language. It says, you know how they said um, they're not babies in diapers to be taught down by such as you. It says, but that's exactly how you will be addressed. God will speak to his people in baby talk one syllable at a time and he'll do it through foreign oppressors. Okay. Basically, God offered these people some some sort of way out. He offered them a safe place. He offered them a resting place. He um he offered them something that only the Lord can give, and it could have been a gift in some way, but there was no answer. So it says, God has told his people here is a place of rest. Let the weary rest here. This is a place of quiet rest, but they would not listen. So he he kind of probably told them like hey you could really give up the sin <laughs> that you in you could really stop the foolishness that you got going on like this whoever you could have been that place of rest you could have been uh, that safe place that wisdom for them that light for them and they didn't answer the call. They didn't, um, they didn't listen. Okay. In the past, he said to them, this is a place where you can rest when you are tired. It is a place where you can be safe. But his people refused to listen. We know that the Lord is a place where we can rest and a place that we can be safe. And safe. So, number one, he's letting them know, like, just come to me. Number two the Lord is with you and if they just would have listened they would have found rest and they would have found um that safe place they would have they would have been they were in the presence of God and did not know it okay so now the Lord will spell out his message for them again one line at a time one line at a time a little here and a little there we're at Isaiah 28 13 a little here and a little there so that they will stumble and fall they will be injured trapped and captured
He offered rest and comfort to you all, but you refused to listen to him. Isaiah 28, 14. Therefore, listen to this message from the Lord, you scoffing rulers in Jerusalem. Scoffing? What does scoffing mean? Because everybody don't know what scoffing means. Basically, people who make fun of something. You scoffing rulers. So these people are in positions of authority. It says, contemptuously ridiculing or mocking someone or something. Speak to someone or about something in a scornfully derisive or mocking way. It means to ridicule, to make fun of, to poke fun at, to scorn, to dismiss, to make light of, to belittle, to taunt, to make a fool of. <laughs> These leaders who do this, these scoffing leaders. Isaiah 28, 15. You boast, we have struck a bargain to cheat death and have made a deal to dodge the grave. The coming destruction can never touch us, for we have built a strong refuge made of lies and deception. Some of you folk think they lies is going to save them. They think they plots is going to save them. They think them stories they told is going to save them. They think they day in court. <laughs> Whatever they think they about. They, man, these folk better tell the truth. And shame the devil. <laughs> Listen. They have no clue. It says. Now listen to God's message, you scoffers. You who rule this people in Jerusalem. You say. We've taken out good life insurance. We've hedged all our bets, covered all our bases. No disaster can touch us. We've thought of everything. We're advised by the experts. We're set. See, some of these people, they done went here, there, everywhere and came up with some type of story, some type of alibi, some type of something. First off, whatever lie they're hiding behind, Whatever mask they're hiding behind, whatever fraudulent activity they got planned, it is not going to work in Jesus' name. Because remember, he has sent a strong one, a mighty one, an army, handpicked by God to defeat these people, to throw them to the ground. He is going to be a spirit of justice for those who are in deciding um, in positions where... Decisions have to be made. <sighs> These people better be very, very careful. They better be very, very careful. And if they and if and if, and if it is a legal situation, God is going to be in the jury. He's going to be on the bench. He's going to be on the defense. He's going to be on the prosecutor. It's like these people are going to their head is about to spin at what God is going to do. These people are crazy. They're flat out crazy. Flat out crazy. Now listen, you arrogant leaders who rule here in Jerusalem over this people. Listen to what the Lord is saying. You boast that you have made a treaty with death. <laughs> oh, they can't be stopped. Oh, they can't. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> it ain't gonna be that bad. Ain't nothing gonna happen to me. Oh, I'm good. I ain't worried about that. Oh, oh. I I didn't I didn't I I got the one up on them. <laughs> they think that their positions that they're holding is going to stand, child. They're about to drop, collapse. They think that whatever whatever you got going on in whatever situation where a decision has to be made, honey, it is going to go in your favor, in God's child, and in God's chosen child's favor. Understand that. You boast that you have made a treaty with death and reached an agreement with the world of the dead. You are certain that disaster will spare you when it comes because you depend on lies and deceit to keep you safe. Mm -mm. God letting them know, like, I see, I see your lies. I, I see you. God letting them know up front, I am the one who see you. <laughs> I see your lies and deception. I see what I see. I see that mask that you got going on. New King James Version, Isaiah 28, 15. Because you have said we have made a covenant with death 
and with Sheol. We are in agreement. When the overflowing scourge passes through, it will not come to us, for we have made lies our refuge, and under falsehood, we have hidden ourselves. And under falsehood, they have hidden themselves. See, every fraud is about to be exposed. Every lie is about to be exposed. Every motive is about to be exposed. Every deception is about to be exposed. Those who are not who they say they are is about to be exposed. Those who are not who they claim to be, they are about to be exposed. And all will see. Every eye will see. Everyone will see. The very ones that, that they faking in front of are about to see them for who they are. The very ones who hurt you are about to be hurt. They're about to be humiliated. The very ones who think they can, oh, ain't nothing going to happen to me. I got it all made. I got, I got, I, I, I know what to say. I know what to do. All the lies and deception. God see them. They're about to be exposed. They're about to be brought down. They're about to be defeated. They're about to drown. They're about to drown. They're about to drown. And I feel sorry for them. I feel sorry for them. Because you could take these words that I send lightly. But I guarantee you. I guarantee you. I guarantee you. My God is not a God that he should lie. Since when has God told a lie? In the beginning. Since when has God told a lie? In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. See, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. See, you got the word. You got the word. God is with you. See, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And God was the word. And the word was God. Like, God is like in the midst. He's in our midst right now. As this is playing. You better know that you got the victory. You better know that your enemies is defeated. You better know that that court case is going in your favor. You better know that that decision that needs to be made is going to be made in your favor. You better know that whatever outcome, whatever turnaround that you need is going to go in your favor. You better know that that business contract is going to go in your favor. You, be you better know that wherever justice is needing to be served, that it will be served. Whether it's in your household, whether it's on your job, whether it's in your relationship, whether it's with your children. <laughs> Justice will be served. Whether it's with your peers, whether it's at your church, whether it's at your local grocery store. Justice will be served. It don't matter where it's at. Justice will be served on your behalf. My God is not a God that he should lie. He's not a man that he should lie. <laughs> Y'all better pay attention. Don't take it. Don't take it lightly. He would not lie. He would not lie. Isaiah 28, 16. Oh, I skipped down. I'm sorry. I skipped down some. No, I didn't. Okay, no, I didn't. Isaiah 28, 16. Therefore, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Look, I am placing a foundation stone in Jerusalem, a firm and tested stone. It is a precious cornerstone that is safe to build on. Whoever believes need never be shaken. What I just say, then what I just told you. And then all of a sudden this comes to right after what I what I just told you. OK, let me break it down for you need never be shaken you understand me therefore this is what the sovereign lord says this is what god says look i am placing a foundation stone in jerusalem a firm and tested stone it is a precious cornerstone that is safe to build on whoever believes whoever believes whoever believes need never need never be shaken I want to give you um a little reminder about a cornerstone. I want to make reference to something. Behold, 
I am laying in Zion a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. And whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. See, I lay in Zion a stone that causes people to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. And the one who believes in him And the one who believes in him will never be put to shame. If you build your foundation on the Lord's word, if you build on Jesus, if you believe in Jesus, if you believe with all your heart, you will never be put to shame. If you believe in the word, you will never be put to shame. If you understand and you... If, if you believe, you will never be put to shame. You will never be put to shame. Victory is yours. If you believe in him, victory is yours. You will have no disgrace. You will have no shame. There will be no disgrace. There will be no shame for the one who believes. Okay? <laughs> Man. Man. Y'all, they better get it together. Justice is here. Exposure is coming. I will test you, Isaiah 28, 17. I will test you with the measuring line of justice and the plumb line of righteousness. Since your refuge is made of lies, a hailstorm will knock it down. Since, is it, since it is made of deception, a flood will sweep it away. Defaults. Exposure is coming. Exposure is coming. There will be no place to hide. <laughs> they will not have security. They will not have a leg to stand on. In the name of Jesus. I declare and I decree today. That exposure is coming. They will not have a place to hide. Your enemies do not. Will not have a leg to stand on. What do they think? What do they really think was going to happen? Did you really think that you can keep that up forever? Did they really think that they could keep it up forever? Did they really think that they was untouchable? <clears throat> Man. Justice and righteousness will make that foundation strong and true. But if you trust in lies... A storm of ice will destroy your safe place. A flood of water will destroy the place where you are hiding. I want you to know that whatever they think will work is not. They're going to be crushed. They will have no rest. Um, they can't stop death. They can't stop being defeated. They can't stop. <laughs> They can't stop what God is about to do. They can't stop the losses that they are about to take. They will be overcome. They will be conquered. They will fail. They will not win in court. They will not win. Um, the, the lies that they've been telling is not going to hold up for too much longer. Um, what's done in the dark will come to the light. It is already in the light. It's already in the light. <laughs> Man, come on now. Your enemy will have situation after situation. They're going to have hardship after hardship. Loss after loss. Can't keep no money. Can't keep a child. Can't keep peace. Can't keep a partner. Can't keep can't keep a house, can't keep a car, can't keep gas, can't keep a friend, can't keep a... Uh, it's sad to say all these things. I don't even want to keep speaking it. It's up to God, whatever they um, losses are, but just know that they're going to go after loss after loss. They're going to experience loss after loss, and it's nothing for you to be you know, happy about. We do want victory. Um, we do want the victory, and we do want vindication. But sometimes what these folks finna go through, it's gonna be real sad, and we went, we're gonna be like, dang God, 
I know you were going to punish him. I ain't think you were going to do him like that. I knew I was going to win the court case, but I ain't think it was going to be that easy. I knew that you was going to recover what was stolen from me, but I ain't think you was going to take all of that from him. Like, I, I, I don't, I didn't see that coming. Like, <laughs> just like they didn't see it coming. I will cancel the bargain you made to cheat death. And I will overturn your deal to dodge the grave. When the terrible enemy sweeps through, you will be trampled into the ground. It ain't nothing they can do about that. Then, okay, another translation. Then you will see that your precious life insurance policy wasn't worth the paper it was written on. Your careful precautions against death were a pack of illusion and lies. When the disaster happens, you'll be crushed by it. The treaty you have made with death will be abolished and your agreement with the world of the dead will be canceled. When disaster sweeps down, you will be overcome. It will strike you again and again, morning after morning. You will have to bear it day and night. Each new message from God will bring new terror. And again and again, that flood will come morning after morning, day and night until you are carried away. Until you are carried away. It's not going to stop until... <laughs> Until the job is done, it's not going to stop. It's not going to stop. It's not going to stop. And that's sad. And that's really scary because I would hate to be on the Lord's bad side. Some of these people is going to cry out to God. I'm going to give you what he gave me on that too. I'm going to give you what he gave me on that too. And that's an ugly thing. I'm, I'll probably make a next video about that one. A flood of punishment will come again and again, and it will carry you away. It will come every morning and all through the day and the night. When you understand this message from the Lord, you will be very afraid. So basically, he wants to let you know that um, your enemy will have no rest. They will have nothing to hide under. And it states... Isaiah 28, 20. The bed you have made is too short to lie on. The blankets are too narrow to cover you. Um, it says. Message translation, it says, every time disaster comes, you'll be in on it. Disaster in the morning, disaster at night. Every report of disaster will send you cowering in terror. There will be no place where you can rest. Nothing to hide under. Sheesh. It states, you will be like the person in the proverb who tries to sleep on it sleep in a bed too short to stretch out on with a blanket too narrow to wrap himself in yeah you won't have nothing like if a blanket is too narrow to wrap yourself in like some spaces are uncovered it's 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 gonna be odd what the lord does how the lord brings these people down it's gonna be it's gonna be crazy some of them have been staring at um some of them have been staring at the secret weapon the whole time and had no clue that that was going to be the very thing to take them down. They had no clue. They thought that they was playing with you. They had no clue that you was a bomb. They thought that they could do what they wanted to do. They had no clue that you would be the one, the winning ticket, that they was going to cash. Let me tell you something. Baby, they done wrote a check that they don't want to cash. They, they they didn't wrote a check that they don't want to cash. They like look now, I don't want to cash this one in. I be dogged. It's gonna be bad. The Lord will come as He did against the Philistines at Mount Perizim, and against the Amorites at Gibeon. I'm sorry. 
He will come to do a strange thing. He will come to do an unusual deed. I'm going to highlight that. He will come to do a strange thing. He will come to do an unusual deed. See, this is not what they expected, but it is indeed coming. And that's scary. Now, therefore, do not be mockers, lest your bonds be made strong. For I have heard from the Lord God of hosts a destruction determined even upon the even upon the whole earth. Let me give you another one because some of y'all may not understand that. He will come to do a strange thing. He will come to do an unusual deed. For the Lord of heaven's armies has plainly said that he is determined to crush the whole land. So scoff no more or your punishment will be even greater. It says, hard to believe, but true. Not what you would expect, but it's coming. Sober up. Friends, don't scoff. Scoffing will just make it worse. I've heard the orders issued for destruction. Orders from God of the Angels Armies ending up in an international disaster. So he decided already to destroy everything they got going on. And I, in my heart... This is outside the Bible. In, in my heart, I think he warned them and said, and said out loud, don't mock um, or you'll make it worse. And I think he did that because he knows um, these people you are going to you have already carried some type of warning about what's coming or what's going to happen. And they already mocked it or they already denied it or they already said or they already not listening. They don't believe already. They already mocked. And so it's kind of like they set themselves up because I think he knows they mock at the word. So it will be so total destruction. Everything that they got gone. Everything they hiding behind exposed. <sighs> All their secrets out in the open. All of their wrongdoing, people will know. Justice is coming for his people. He don't care. It's total destruction for them. Because they've been warned several times. Just like he just gave them another warning and said, So don't laugh at me when I warn you. If you do not listen, your punishment will become even worse. He know they, he know what they're going to do before they do it. He gave them ample amount of time to get it right. So, your enemy, whoever going up against you, they have met their match. <laughs> one that is handpicked by God. See, the Lord has one who is powerful and strong, like a hailstorm and destructive wind, like a driving rain and a flooding downpour. He will throw it forcefully to the ground. Yep. 